Good evening, and welcome to a special holiday edition of It's a Miracle. I'm Mia Peoples. And I'm Richard Thomas. And tonight, we're going to share some very inspirational stories with you, full of hope and encouragement, and of course, miracles. Each of them is a small gift from us to you, and the first one begins appropriately on Christmas Eve. It was December 24, 1993, and 14-year-old Trisha Zemba decided to spend part Hi, of the day before Christmas Goodbye. outdoors horseback riding. It's one of many activities she enjoys. She appreciates the special relationship that can develop between a horse and its rider. It's just a feeling of union. It's a feeling of being one with another living creature and knowing that there's a certain friendship between you and the animal. There has to be for you to be able to ride and do it successfully. Trisha was an accomplished rider who had won many awards in amateur riding contests. Today, she was taking her mother's horse, Sly, out on the trails near their ranch in Phoenix, Arizona. Sly was extremely gentle. He was a good horse. For the most part, he was very calm. He was, in a, he was an excellent trail rider because he just liked plodding along and going at his own slow pace. He had the speed and the power. He just chose not to use it most of the time. But that day, as Trisha and Sly headed out on Bridal Path, something spooked the horse and he took off running. The power and speed of this ex race horse was overwhelming. Sly! All of Sly's 1,200 pounds fell on top of Trisha. They both laid there stunned. And for a horse to get up, they can't just stand up. So he had to use his full weight and push down on that hip and that leg and push himself up using my body as a kind of a cushion against the ground. Once the frightened horse was on his feet, Trisha was able to get up. And to her amazement, she didn't seem seriously injured. I was sore, I was bruised, and that was the extent of it. Oh, I know what that is. Even so, the it's next day on Christmas, Trisha was taking it easy, and her parents, Joel and Mary Jane Zemba, were only mildly concerned. It was a pretty typical Christmas morning, uh, my little boy getting up early. Trisha came out and joined us, but she was stiff and sore. I got you again. Yeah, that was okay, easy, idea. easy, easy hug. Hey, you're so up. Woo! She kept telling us she was all right. She stayed on the couch, but we had Christmas morning. We opened the gifts, except she was sore. Not in a million years that I think what eventually happened could happen or was going to. A little more than a week later, Trisha was taking a bath. I remember going to stand up and not making it. I remember landing with a thump in the bathroom, and that's it. Trisha! So I went Trisha. in and I found her. Uh, slumped Trisha, across the side no, of the tub Trisha, and I no. tried to get her up. There was no response. She wasn't answering me. You know, I didn't know how she'd hit her head, exactly what had happened to her. Trisha finally came to, but she developed excruciating pain in her left leg and lower back, pain that would not go away. After weeks of doctor visits with no answers, she was rushed to the hospital. <laughs> the pain was horrible. I remember being wheeled into the hospital and how painful that was because when they were rolling me along on the gurney I could feel the vibrations from their hands touching the gurney and then the vibrations from it rolling over the floor and how much that increased the pain and how much more excruciating it made it. Trisha was diagnosed with a rare nervous disorder, possibly triggered when her horse fell on her. It's called reflex sympathetic dystrophy or RSD. Dr. Marilyn Wells, who was familiar with the strange condition, was called in. The brain sets up abnormal circuits from an injury, and it can be a very mild injury. Anything from a sprained ankle to a, a slightly fractured toe. And for some reason, we don't really know why yet, the brain, instead of, of sending out signals to kind of decrease the pain, sends out signals that actually increase the intensity of the pain. And the pain never stops. Eating and sleeping become impossible. 
Even large doses of painkillers cannot provide relief. The medical prognosis is grim. These patients were basically left with living on strong pain medications for the rest of their lives. And this is why there's a rather high suicide rate amongst RSD patients. According to Dr. Wells, Trisha had the worst case of RSD she'd ever seen. This is actual footage of Trisha in her hospital bed. Not even a powerful painkiller like morphine was able to stop her nerves from sending pain signals when no pain should be felt. It was horrible to see my daughter in this kind of pain. I was totally helpless to help her. Um, I was supposed to take care of her and I couldn't. I couldn't make it go away. I think it's the worst thing you can go through is to watch your child in pain and to be totally helpless to be able, just nothing you can do for her. Meanwhile, Trisha's team of doctors were running out of answers. They had tried everything possible, including running um, anesthetic directly into her spinal column, and it wasn't touching the pain. The doctors prepared Trisha's parents yeah, for the I worst. Really know how to tell you guys they believed that there was no hope that this was going to continue on. He said we needed to. Uh, think about institutionalization and that uh, we needed to think about our son and our own lives and that they would take care of Trisha. Even Dr. Wells had trouble accepting the inevitable. As a trained medical person you, you force yourself to do it but inside I felt like a hole was being eaten through me of her pain. And then one night at about 3 a.m., with her body once again contorting in anguish, Trisha begins to pray. I wasn't praying, you know, oh God, please make me better. I think I was just praying in general. Suddenly, the pain began to disappear, slowly and steadily, as a warm, comforting feeling swept over her body. It slipped down my body and slipped and slipped and slipped farther down. And I felt it go all the way down my left leg. And then I felt it exit through my toes. And there's no way to describe it other than that. It exited. It left my body. And I heard very, very quietly, almost to the point where I couldn't hear it, get up. And at that point, I really thought I had flipped. I didn't think there was any way that this was truly happening. And so I prayed, you know, if that's you, God, I need more. I need more confirmation. And I heard louder and more clearly and much more authoritatively, get up. But how could she? She had not sat up or walked for over three months. And I set my feet down on the ground. And when I set my feet down on the ground, I didn't have any pain anywhere in my body. My whole body was pain free. She stood there for a moment, not daring to believe, and then walked out of her room and down the hall. The night shift nurse on duty was the first to see Trisha walking. She was in total shock. It's amazing to me that she didn't just pass out and fall on the floor because she just looked like she'd seen a ghost. It was, she couldn't believe it. What are you doing out of bed? You can't She knew walk. that I, I shouldn't be able to do that. She knew that the RSD should still be controlling my life, and it obviously wasn't. At 4 a.m. that morning, Trisha started making phone calls. You know, calling doctors, calling my family, and, you know, going, come to the hospital, I'm fine. You know, I've, I've been healed, it's a miracle. <laughs> I didn't believe it. I did believe it, but um, I said to her, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, I'm healed, I'm fine, come. We all piled in the car and drove down to the hospital, and sure enough, we walked into the hospital room and there was Trisha standing, in the, standing at the end of her bed, completely fine. Dr. Wells reviewed Trisha's x-rays before and after her recovery and discovered that not one trace of what had caused her condition remained. In my experience and in my knowledge of RSD, uh, there has never been a spontaneous remission. In other words, just symptoms vanishing like that um, in the history of medicine. Deep inside, I think most physicians understand the presence of the spiritual in this world. Even though we have to, to look at it through scientific 
microscopes, if you will. Doctors cautioned Tricia that the syndrome could return as mysteriously as it disappeared. But today, five years after its onset, Tricia is living a full, active life and has absolutely no recurring symptoms. Every morning when I wake up, I can't take for granted that I'm able to get up and walk out of that bed because I know what it's like not to be able to do that. I was given such a gift that I don't understand why I would be chosen to give that gift. You know, I'm not perfect, I'm not holy, I'm not some saint, I'm just the everyday person. And it's amazing to me that God would choose to touch my life in such a dramatic way, to choose to speak to me.